Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with another spirit-led teaching. Uh, and today's teaching will be knowing the difference between existing and living. Existing and living. And this is part two of, of this series. Knowing the difference between existing and living. We exist in that fallen state in our carnality, under the law in the spirit, which functions after the flesh. Okay, we we uh, we exist in our carnality, but we're alive in Christ in our spirituality. Uh, when we're in our carnality, we're in the second heaven, Ephesians six twelve. When we're born back into our spirituality, we're back in the blessings. We've been removed from the curse and, and born back into the blessings of Christ, which is in the spirit of Christ. Uh, Ephesians 3.1. Ephesians 3.1, uh, Ephesians 1.3, chapter 1, verse 3, is the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where the spiritual blessings are. And the... Uh, Ephesians 6.12... It's where we are in that fallen state, our carnality. That's the that's the high places. Uh, the high places is where the high minded are. The heavenly places is where the Christ minded are. Okay, and most of the time, when someone is high minded, it means they're biblical. They're in the flesh. They're puffed up in the flesh through religious approval in the flesh and religious offices in the flesh. They get high minded. But those that are uh, in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, they are the Christ-minded. They are the Christ-minded. Um, let us go to Luke 12, 15 through 21. And remember that when we're in our carnality, all we can see is the flesh because our carnality in that in the deadness of our, our sins and trespasses under the law, it functions in accordance with the flesh. All it sees is the flesh. All it knows is the flesh. All it could reason is the flesh. Because we're carnal in spirit. Because we're carnal in spirit. So let's go to Luke 12, 15 through 21. 15 says, Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life or a woman's life does not consist in the abundance of things which you possess. The things you possess do not make you rich before the Lord. Your house, your money, your cars, there's nothing wrong with those things uh, in the flesh. That's the material world. There's nothing wrong with having the things of the material world. But the things in the material world in the flesh do not make you rich unto the Lord in the spirit. And we're going to get to that in a second. When you think, when you tie blessings to what you see, you're going to miss the revelation of what you know and going to end up in grave spiritual danger. Okay. You got to get in the know. Because what you see is not forever. What you see is very temporary. Okay. What you see is very temporary. And he spake a parable unto them. Remember, the false Christian is rich because of what they have. The false Christian, uh, they're prosperous because they have money. They're deceived. The true Christian is prosperous and we have money. So you see the separation between prosperity and money. Money is provision for the flesh. Prosperity is for the eternal man and woman in the spirit. And he spake a parable unto them saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, 
See, he said, I will say to my soul. Didn't even know he had a spirit. He said, I will say to my soul. You see, the dead know they got a soul, but they're dead in spirit. I will say to my soul, soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, you fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Then who shall those things be for which you have provided? Then who shall those things be for that you have provided? So is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You see, when you operate in your carnality and all you can see is the flesh, you pursue what you think is prosperity, the things of the flesh. So when you heap these things upon yourself in the flesh and you dead your sins and trespasses under the law in your carnality in the spirit, you see, you... You... you you lay up treasure for yourself, but yet you're not rich toward God. You got treasure for yourself in the flesh, but you're not rich toward God in the spirit. And God is the spirit. And they that walk with him must walk with him in spirit and in truth. So this man was not walking in the spirit. He was not alive in his spirituality. He was existing in his carnality. And this is the type of people that are in the world, the church world, that the church world calls prosperous. The church world calls successful. I'll guarantee you this man was religious. I'll guarantee you this, this man was religious. And you have a lot of people with a, a biblical faith that have the financial and material riches of the world and think they're blessed. And think they're blessed, but they've been deceived. And they're operating in their carnality, which is functioning after their humanity. Because that's all you can see in that, that fallen state of, of your carnality. You're going to function in accordance with your humanity. That's all they see. But this is why Christ says in 633 that seek first the kingdom of, of, of heaven. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. He going to put the financial and material provision of Christ of the spirit under the under the prosperity of the spirit. You will be a steward of the material good. Okay? But your prosperity as a Christian is independent from the financial and material provision you possess as a Christian. You see this Man did not, this religious man did not have his possessions. His possessions had him. He defined himself by what he had. He defined himself by what he had. And he thought he was blessed. He thought he was rich. All right. So is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We have to not be deceived by the deceitfulness of worldly riches, of thinking you blessed because of what you have. Be thankful for what you have, but understand that everybody that's getting that that gets money or is advancing financially and materially, it does not mean that the Lord is doing it. You got to look for the fruit of the Spirit in that, because if it, <clears throat> if it's following the fruit of the Spirit. That's the evidence of Christ's spirit. If it's not following the fruit of the spirit, that is all taking place outside of Christ's spirit, which means that is being obtained under the law, unlawfully. You're getting something in the flesh, but you're not rich towards the Lord in the spirit. You're not rich towards the Lord in the spirit. Go the way of the spirit. Pray to be born of the spirit. Because no matter how good you may have it now, it, it can and it will come to an abrupt end. Because what you have is the Lord's, but it don't mean the Lord gave it to you. Satan, due to sin, illegally obtained the material, the financial and material good of the world. He didn't obtain it from the Lord. He, he took it from us and made us slaves to it. Now you got to go out there every day and work 
for something to work for something in that fallen state that God freely gave you when you were alive in his in, in, in before when we were alive in Christ. But through being born of the Spirit and everything put back in the divine order of the Spirit, he's going to put back under your stewardship the financial and material provision of the Spirit. But he does it in the end in the same manner in which he did it in the beginning. He does it in the end in the same manner in which he, done it in the he did it in the beginning because provision is not a process. The Lord can put multiple millions of dollars under your stewardship just like that. Prosperity is the process. Prosperity is the process, not the provision. Provision is not the process. The prosperity is. Okay. But once you established in the prosperity and in the prosperity, you already have the promise of the provision of the abundance of financial uh, provision because you've been walking with it. You're going to get the manifestation of it. It's going to be put under your stewardship. That's divine order. He freely gave it to you in the beginning. He's going to freely add it to you and uh, give it back to you in the end. Freely, which means you ain't going to have to go physically labor for it. He's going to freely restore it back to you. When, you, when we're restored back to him in the spirit and through the transformation of the mind of our spirit where he makes alive the soul and the body by the fruit of the spirit, okay, he then adds back to the, puts under our stewardship in the flesh, but not according to the flesh, according to the fruit of the spirit, the financial and material abundance of the spirit, okay, because it all belongs to the Lord, but prosperity is first and provision is second, just like the spirit is first and the flesh is second. He deals with us spiritually first. All right. Uh, Romans 8, Romans 8, 8 and 9. Romans 8. Romans 8, 8 and 9. Romans 8, 8 and 9. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See, they that are in the flesh cannot please God because they that are in the flesh do not have the spirit of God. 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, they're none of his. If any man or woman have not the Spirit of Christ, they're none of his. They don't belong to Christ because the children of God are identified by the Spirit of God. You don't have the Spirit of God. You are not a child of God. You don't have the Spirit of God. You are not a child of God. Romans 9, 8. For they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Because they don't have the spirit of God, but the children of the promise are counted as a seed. The children of the promise, they're the seed of God because they are in the spirit of God. They are in the spirit of God. All right. The, the children of God are in the spirit of God. And once they become true believers as, as child of God, as the children of God in the spirit, they enter into sonship. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It didn't say as many as are born of the spirit are the sons of the spirit, are the sons of God. When you're born of the spirit, you're a child of God. When you enter into the sonship of the spirit, that's the leading of the spirit. You're a son of God because you've entered into sonship. And from sonship, you spiritually mature into manhood and womanhood. You spiritually mature into manhood and womanhood. But you got to be a true believer before you can spiritually mature into being a true Christian. And uh, this brings us to the end of part two of this teaching. Now, once again, I want to ask the question, where are you? Are you existing in the biblical church in your carnality or are you alive in the gospel of Christ in your spirituality? 
Where are you? 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says that we have to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. The faith is the spirit of God. And the only way to be in the spirit of God is, is to be born of God. You, you can't be in the spirit of God any other way. See, you can join a church, but you can't join the gospel. Joining a church is the work of the flesh. Being in the gospel is exclusively a work of the spirit. You gotta go, your flesh gotta go to church. But wherever you are, the gospel will come to your spirit. The Lord's hand is not slack that it cannot reach. And I want to say that one more time. Your flesh gotta go to church. But the gospel will come to your spirit wherever you are. Christ will meet you right where you are spiritually. Because the, the gospel addresses the spiritual condition of the fallen man and woman. Of the fallen man and woman. This is how he gives you long life in the flesh, but not according to the flesh, according to the fruit of the spirit. All right. This is where long life comes from. And that brings us to the end of the teachings of part two of knowing the difference between living and existing. Examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. Seek the face of the Lord. Ask the Lord to bring you into his grace, which is into his spirit. You got to be there. You got to be there. You got to go from church. You got to go from, from, from the church mentality to the gospel. You got to go from the letter to the light. You got to go from, 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 from following the letter by sight to faith. Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Well, you got to be born in the faith. And faith works by love. So being born again, being a work of faith, that's a work of love. That's a work of love. Don't deny the love of Christ. Because that ain't this little worldly love that, that, that people play with out here. The love of Christ is a powerful thing. It's a very powerful thing. And when you come to know the love of God, it, it's nothing to be played with. It is nothing to be played with or toyed with. So pray to be brought into the fold. Pray to be brought, brought into the fold. I love you and I thank you and I'll see you in part three of this teaching. Love you in the Lord.